My life all began in this little village in the northwestern part of Tanzania. Being knowledgeable enough, I never imagined of a world better than the one within my scope. I saw myself growing up, walking seven kilometers to school, passing through the jungles, and expecting to sit on, on bad benches with door and floor, and actually finding that to be fun. Not until I was 14 is when I realized the potential that I was just missing by living a normal village life. There's when I moved to the city and got exposed to things that I didn't have a chance to when I was back in the village. Throughout my experience in the United States of America, I've had a chance to experience things which have been so amazing to my life as an exchange student, and I have got a chance to meet different kind of people with different ideas about Africa, and in connection with these ideas, my village life ideas, my city life ideas, my American life ideas, in combining them together, I have developed a very unique sense about Africa and its uniqueness. I'm very sure that every one of you today is very familiar with this hope rising term here in America, that everyone, any American can be able to succeed and achieve the better life by, if he's determined, does hard work. In that same sense, African people have always had a dream, but sadly a dream which was shattered by the past years of colonialism and slavery. African people never dreamed of their trusted officials running to Asia and Europe for expensive routine medical checkups, while an ordinary African is stronger at mercy of collapsed health infrastructure. Never had you been a dream of African people to see their leaders going to Canada and the United States of America asking for medical help and medical assistance to treat diseases like malaria and other, like HIV, while we have everything really takes to treat those kind of diseases. And just for a fact, Every after three seconds in Africa, an African child dies out of malaria. And each year, 400 million Africans are infected by malaria. Out of those 400 million people in Africa, three million die every year out of that disease. This is not an interesting fact, and it's not happy to hear about it. But we as Africans should be the one to think about it and think of the ways that we can use to solve these problems. Not like running out of our borders asking for help. We should be the one to have the spirit to ask ourselves, how can we change this? I believe that the only way that we can be able to tackle these problems is by seeing that the African dream, we should, we should be the one to make it that real. The African dream is deeply rooted in the abundant reaches of our cultural heritage that our forefathers once used to deliver that of slavery and colonialism. That dream, that confidence that, raised, that can be able to refuse the fact that Nigeria, which is like the, uh, Africa's richest country and the most popular country, ha country has got more than 42% of its people living under the poverty line. But also, that African dream is the one which can raise the courage to overcome the fact that we have places with no education, with students who work, instead of going to school, they work like as you see, my friend here, he works in a farm instead of going to school to pay for his school fees and for his hungry, to, he, to feed his hungry mother who uh, is part of the 42% of African women who lacks basic education. Nelson Mandela once said that education is the only weapon which can change the world. And that's the African dream. That's the only potential which can be able to change this hijacked African dream which has been handed out to foreign donors. If only that little child in the village which has no instead of going to school, he works in, is to pay for his school fees, will be provided with everything which he needs for his education. If only those schools in the African village which do not have enough uh, accessories for, for, for performing the, the education, if only they'll be provided with those and more than that, we, should say, we shall say that Africa lives its dream. And I believe that if only those governments, if only we, should, we will have those people who will be able to stand out for other, for other African people, who will be able to stand out with their lives, like Nelson Mandela. He gave 27 years of his life, fight, 27 years in jail, fighting for the rights of the, of, of, of the native South African people. If we could only have those kind of people in Africa nowadays, we, sh we shall really say that we are living the African dream. And I believe that one day we live the African dream, and that dream is an Africa which is free from poverty. Thank you.